So welcome to CCTE SPAN 2022. Uh, it's really exciting to be here in person. Uh, you may have forgotten, it gets windy in Sacramento in this time of year. And the flapping of the roof is nothing to be concerned about. Um, those of us who've done this a few years, we're used to it. No, for those of you living on the coast, it's not an earthquake, it's just valley winds. Um, so welcome, it's really exciting to have everybody here. I'm Eric Engdahl, I'm president of CCTE, at least until three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Um, and then, then I get to become past president and enter FERP next year when I, my university. Um, I want to welcome you all and I want to acknowledge a number of people that are uh, important to CCTE. I'm curious, how many of you, anyone here, is this your first CCTE conference? Welcome. I think you'll find that Cal Council can become a really important professional home for you. I know that for me, it has really become very important to my development as an educator and my development in teacher education. So uh, I don't just say that because I'm president. I say that because I think I started back in San Jose many years ago um, when Letty Ramirez said to me, you're going. Um, and it was the best thing that ever happened to me. So I'm glad you're here. Welcome. I think you'll find CCTE is a really wonderful professional home for you. If only to get to talk to the CTC in person. Um, uh, a word about masks. Um, we sort of did a quick poll before we started the executive committee and the board. Um, our preference is that you wear masks unless that you're eating and drinking, just out of an abundance of caution. Um, and that, that's about masks. So let me uh, just introduce uh, our uh, officers. President-elect Bettina Shea, back there in the corner. Uh, our Vice President for AACTE, Kimberly White-Smith. I haven't seen her yet. Okay, Vice President for ATE, Michael Casenza, who is also not here, and past President Virginia Kennedy. Virginia, while I think of it, what's the announcement I have to make about your meeting tomorrow? Yeah. Actually, Virginia, come up here so it's recorded. Oh, yeah, there, perfect. Uh, one of our projects um, is called the, it was called the Intersegmental Project. So some of you have heard of it. And now it's been rebranded as PD for MT. And so we are a professional development for master teachers. It's a project of Cal Council. It, um, it is something that we do um, that, that um, any university, any program that has, uh, is looking to um, do coaching, you know, coach training. Um, and those of us in special ed know that this is a new aspect of our new programs to, to add that to us. Um, we are having a meeting tomorrow morning you will all be here at 7.30, right? Um, <laughs> and um, we, so that's for folks who are interested in hearing about it. Also for folks who are already part of it and would like to give some feedback or, or just chat with us about what's going on. So, um, and it's in this room tomorrow morning. So thank you very much. Thank you, Virginia. I also wanna acknowledge the board members. If any of you are here, wave your hand. Um, Ernest Black, Grace Cho in the back. Uh, Anaida Colon Munoz, uh, Karen Escalante, Sarah Johnson, Shadi Rashandel. We can hold our applause at uh, Terrell Sales, Allison Smith, and Ivania Soto. Raise your hand, board members. 
I also want to just acknowledge the associated groups and their presidents, uh, the Association of California Community College Teacher Education Programs, one of our newest affiliated organizations, Steve Batista, Association of California Colleges and Universities Education, Allison Smith, California Alliance for Inclusive Schooling, Don Cardinal and Marquita Grano Shire. California Association for Bilingual Teacher Education, Sharon Merritt. Sharon. California Association of Professors of Special Education, who've already been hard at work today. Um, Vicki Graff. California Association of School University Partnerships, Elizabeth Brown, and the Center for Reaching and Teaching the Whole Child, Nancy Markowitz. And finally, um, I just want to acknowledge our really important co-sponsors, um, the College of Education, CSU Channel Islands, the Charter College of Education, CSU Los Angeles, College of Education, CSU Sacramento, thank you, specials because I know they're here, Department of Educator Preparation and Public School Programs, Office of the CSU Chancellor, the Atala College of Education Studies at Chapman University, and the Graduate School of Education, San Francisco State University. Please, the biggest round of applause for our sponsors. And we have a lot to do today. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to the policy committee and our three co-chairs, Cynthia Grutzik, Pia Wong, and Nicole Howard. Good morning, friends. Um, well, it's so nice to be back here at the Citizen Hotel and so happy that our friend the wind um, also came to join us so that we could remember why it was so special to have a conference here. <laughs> it was not windy yesterday, I just want to say. Um, so I also want to continue the, the, um, in the vein of thinking and acknowledging um, some really, really important um, heavy lifts that happen to make this conference um, a reality. So all members of the policy committee, which has grown by leaps and bounds, I can't even really um, take the time right now to, to name all the members. But if you are a member of the policy committee and you come to those um, four o'clock on Monday afternoon SPANET meetings, <laughs> a little bit sexist there, sorry, we'll have to change the language, but please stand up if you're on the CCTE policy committee so we can give you a round of applause. Okay. We'd also like to thank the CCTE board. Um, we'd like to thank Alan Jones and his stand-in today, Monica Boomgardner. Um, we're really uh, appreciative for the tech team, Sarah Thomas and um, in absentia, uh, Patricia Brown. She had a baby, that's her excuse. We think that's good enough. <laughs> um, and then also the Race and Education Analytics Learning Lab, the real lab at University of Redlands, which did the data analysis for our um, lunch sessions tomorrow. And then um, really like gratitude as, as big as the universe is um, for Sarah Johnson, who set up all of the, the meetings for tomorrow. So we could not do this without her. And she does it quietly and in the background with a lot of grace and style. So thank you, Sarah. I also just wanna acknowledge um, just the times that we're in, uh, 6 million deaths from COVID. This has been a significant, um, tragic, uh, heartbreaking disruption for for every person on the globe, um, and particularly felt by those who are um, in low-income uh, communities, low-income countries, um, people of color, um, minority folks, uh, COVID has really um, created, you know, unimaginable hardship, and especially also for young people who are trying to go to school and um, sort of get going with their development. We also felt like it was important to acknowledge just um, what a tragic time this is in terms of um, world peace. So we have um, a sort of unimaginable um, aggression uh, for the, the people of Ukraine. 
um, but they're unfortunately part of a very long list of other people around the world in Syria and Hong Kong who are um, fighting against tyranny and fighting for their rights as people. And so we really felt, feel like this is actually a time to kind of um, lean into the work that we do, understand the great significance of what we do preparing educators to then go and teach students and help them to develop habits of civic engagement, of the ability to discern facts from propaganda and to help them develop a commitment to the common good. So um, these have always been goals that have animated our work, but I think there's no time like the present to really um, intensify what we do um, around this uh, concept of educational equity and um, justice. So thank you for um, keeping that in mind, particularly as we meet with the policymakers. And I will now turn the mic over to Cindy. Thank you, Pia. Good morning, everybody. And I'm looking at our colleagues on Zoom because my camera's right in front of me. And then to everybody in the room, so great to see you here in person. It's been a long time since we were here at SPAN in Sacramento. And we've had, in the interim, two really great online meetings. Um, spring 2020, I think we were the first, I'll just claim it, to pivot with a lot of help from our amazing Nicole Howard and tech, other tech folks helped us see how we could do this and we did it. And then again, in spring 21, we were here um, virtually together, um, learned, kept learning a lot, kept working hard, but there's, there's just, it's just great to see you all here. And I really appreciate um, those colleagues on Zoom who've taken time to join us as well. Our goal today is to make sure it's a wonderful in-person meeting and a wonderful Zoom meeting. So we want to, you know, as educators, we're always working on our pedagogy. So if anybody has ideas of how we can make this better and how you can see what you need to see and get the information you need to get, just tell us. Because we want to make sure that everybody has a really good opportunity to engage with all of this, with each other, uh, whether you're in person or on Zoom, and then also with all of the amazing content that we will be sharing in the next, today and tomorrow. Um, my piece of the hello is to give a little bit of a historical note the, about the goals of SPAN. Um, historical in that we set, up, set them out very, very intentionally when we started in spring 27, 2017. And they remain really important goals. And I wanna just center us around this work. Our goals then were to, and still are, to position CCTE as the key teacher education resource poised to impact research, practice, and policy for quality teaching. And so our goals back then were in the, over the next three years, and I'm just gonna say this has really been happening and continues to build relationships and expand CCTE's policy network, develop members' skills as partners, advocates, and communicators, and then affirm CCTE's expert influence at the state level. We fill an important, we bridge an important set of policies around uh, pre-K, even ECE through 12, you know, like K, we always say K-12, and I'm trying to practice saying earlier and earlier now, that whole policy world, and then the IHE policy world, higher ed policy world, but teacher ed, spans both of those in really key ways. We understand both worlds in ways that nobody else does. And so I feel like it's our job to translate a lot and to bring issues to bear um, with policymakers and deciders um, from our perspective to really help them understand how things play out and how much work it is to prepare re and retain um, educators. We need to make that so visible. So that's that's our project today and tomorrow and ongoing. So now I will turn it over to Nicole Howard, our co-planner to give an overview of these two days. And I know we're, we're already at 1030, so um, it can be a brief overview, but I wanna make sure we do all the pinning right. I will keep it brief because I do see that um, Chelsea Kelly has already joined us. And I know that we are scheduled to hear from her next regarding policy priorities for educator preparation. We were very thoughtful around scheduling this hybrid experience. So you'll notice as you look through the two days that there are some sessions on site 
And then there are virtual sessions. So later today, we'll have virtual roundtables, research roundtables, and policy conversations virtually. And then you'll also have on-site research roundtable sessions. And then as we move into tomorrow, we are jumping into our ledge visits. And so you'll have some time to prep with, with Pia and myself and Yesenia and Sarah, and also with Cindy. I'm really excited about what we have scheduled for this whole experience. Please do not hesitate to reach out to any of us. If you have any questions, whether you're in the virtual space or in person, we're here to support. And we know that this is different than just being completely virtual. Uh, so if you're online, feel free to drop a message in the chat for me, I'm available here to help guide. And if you're in person, uh, you all know how to get a hold of Cindy and Pia. So thank you all for joining us again. And now I will hand back over, because we're short on time, I believe, I'll hand back over to uh, Pia.